Thank you. Okay, let's, uh, let's get this, this happening. Uh, so my presentation is making is called Making Waste Wise Homes. Uh, this uh, Earthship concept is something uh, that was developed by an architect called Michael Reynolds. And he calls this idea of a sustainable home an Earthship uh, for a bunch of reasons, mainly because it attempts to be really self-sufficient, a bit like a, you know, a, a boat on the ocean, has to do everything for itself. So these things collect all our own energy and store it in batteries. Uh, they collect all their own water. Uh, they're also very efficient with recycling the water. And uh, so they're processing all the sort of waste water. And uh, they're also using a lot of uh, recycled materials, uh, most sort of notably car tyres. And uh, I'm trying to sort of uh, do a demonstration of this technology in Iron Bank. Up in the Adelaide Hills, I'm building a bed and breakfast. It's the first council approved earthship in Australia. Uh, and uh, I've got some photos to show you uh, that, that little project coming up a, a bit later. But um, there are the six principles of the earthship uh, basically, passive heating and cooling. So, this is a home that really uh, doesn't need an air conditioner or a heater. Um, I have put a little heater, uh, you know, wood fired pot belly. Um, thing in my earthship because we do get some pretty cloudy overcast conditions in the Adelaide Hills in the winter time But hopefully that won't really be needed too often uh, And this is achieved by all the, um, the tires Basically, there's a lot of earth packed into the tires and that helps regulate the temperature inside the home uh, So yes, number two renewable energy Batteries and solar panels, they're coming down in price all the time, whereas electricity prices are going up. So part of the idea here is that you can sort of escape from the power bills and also the water bills. Uh, so the on-site sewage treatment, what you see uh, in this image here with the, um, the garden, the indoors garden, that's actually irrigated by the grey water. Um, coming out of the bathroom. So whenever you have a bath or a shower or do some laundry, the water is going into that garden and as long as you're using detergents that aren't you know, harmful to plants, uh, they, um, those plants prosper. Uh, so it, it's actually also teaching you to be a little bit more conscious about the types of products you buy and sort of flush down the drain. I've mentioned the natural and recycled materials. But there, uh, you, can, you can see up there on the roof, they're actually chopping up um, bits of sheet metal from old fridges and washing machines and things like that to do some roofing tiles. There are the, um, the tile walls, those green walls on the side there. Um, and also they use lots of um, beer bottles and um, beer cans uh, as a way to make walls as well. That can be quite beautiful. The other great thing about the Earthship, which is really quite unique, is this idea that you can make food in your home uh, using waste water and that's really great at sort of reconnecting people with where that food comes from. So uh, here's a really big pile of tyres, you can see a few people standing in the corner down here, uh, that's in uh, California, USA <clears throat> and uh, here in Australia we make about 40, uh, 40 million waste power tyres every year and most of them get shipped off to China and burnt. So instead we could be building 40,000 earthships per year, I would argue is a better way to do things. So there are some good examples from Taos, New Mexico where the uh, earthships evolved of uh, building with natural and recycled materials. Uh, this is the process for building these tyre walls where you basically just grab a tyre, um, fill it up with earth, compact it in there with a sledgehammer which is hard work, but um, generally uh, you get lots of uh, friends and family to come and help out to do this. It's very DIY. I think that's sort of why I'm here at the, at the Mini Maker Festival today um, because it is very DIY. It's something you can, um, you can get involved with yourself. You can see there a nice tire wall, all nice and straight with a string line. Getting things level uh, is an important part of the, the, the tire wall building process. Uh, if you're feeling a little bit lazy and not don't want to swing a sledgehammer, you can use a sort of mechanical device or a pneumatic device to uh, make your life easier. 
And another great thing about the um, the tire wall is you, you finish it with, you know, on on the inside where uh, rain is not a problem. You finish it with earth as well, so you just mix mud, um, you know, basically the clay that you have in your soil, maybe a little bit of imported sand, and uh, you can you can put it on pretty much by hand. Uh, so there's an example of you know um, interior of an earth ship with some bottle walls there, and I've got a little bottle brick on display on stall 40. Is my um, my mini maker fair stall today? Uh, some some more interior shots of earth ships. They tend to be you know quite organic in shape and quite beautiful. Quite quite a contrast to the types of homes we're used to today, where things are very sort of you know, flat and straight and white. These are more sort of curving and organic and um, sort of more natural colours. There you can see a bottle wall with some lighting behind it. Can wall, using aluminium cans. Bit of both there. Lots of cans. Um, these, are, these are bottles, uh, sorry, plastic bottles. Um, you can see the, you know, that's the shape you get in the bottom of a plastic bottle, sort of water bottle. There are those um, sheet metal tiles from the, the old white goods. These are some underground tanks that get buried out the back of the earth ship, so um, that's where all the water is stored. Uh, and then there's uh, some filters and pumps that gives you pressurized water throughout the home. Uh, the water recycling system, uh, where you use the water basically four times. First, your bath, bath or shower. Um, second for irrigating the indoor garden, third for flushing the toilet, because it's, once it's passed through that garden, it's actually like a filter that takes out a lot of the, you know, the nasty pathogens and things that might make you sick. Um, and once you've used that water for flushing the toilet, you can then use it to irrigate an outdoor garden like fruit trees. So this, this greenhouse part of the Earthship, which is on the northern side of the Earthship, that captures uh, a lot of you know, energy from the sun, um, it's actually a beautiful corridor that connects up all the rooms in the earth ship. Uh, it's treating your grey water, you can do gardening in there, you can grow food in there all year round. Um, it actually drives a, a natural convection system, so in the summer, the hot air in there, you let go of it through roof vents, and that actually pulls cool air through underground tubes for passive air conditioning without the need for any electricity. Uh, so it's, it's providing a whole lot of um, wonderful functions all at once, you know, not to mention things like purifying the air, taking out CO2, giving you some oxygen. Uh, we all like a little bit of oxygen in our lives, that's for sure. Uh, and this is, this is an outdoor um, garden bed for the black water coming out of the septic tank, very similar concept to that indoor um, uh, grey water planter. So this, this is all food that's been grown in earth ships in uh, Taos, New Mexico, USA. And um, they've actually tried to do earth ships with really enormous greenhouses where you could actually grow enough food to maybe survive for a couple of months if uh, you know, there was perhaps a bit of a mishap with um, uh, maybe the supermarket actually might run out of food one day. Uh, they say they'll kind of empty out of food in about three days if there's any interruption to our fuel supply. So um, this idea of growing food in your home is a, is a really neat idea, I think. Hope, of course, I hope the supermarket, supermarket's always got some food there and, you know, um, we can all cross our fingers. Um, that's the earth burn. That's hundreds of tonnes of earth around the earth ship um, that helps keep stable temperatures indoors. They've got all sorts of skylights and roof vents to help, you know, um, give you um, nice fresh air. There are the earth tubes I'm talking about that um, bring in, um, you know, cool air in the summer. You can see the hot air there leaving the greenhouse, pulling through that cool air with my fans. Um, that's actually an uh, adobe rendered uh, tyre wall, and you can see the earth tube um, lid there, which you just sort of open up in the summer when you wanted some cool air. As I mentioned, being totally off-grid actually forces you to be uh, more energy efficient, because you don't want to run your batteries down. But that said, things are kind of engineered so that you do have enough power, you know, uh, so you might just need to be a little bit more aware of if you're going to do something really energy intensive like, um, I don't know, vacuuming or a load of washing. If it's a cloudy day, you might save that for a day where it's more sunny. 
Um, so yeah, I, I kind of feel this is a key concept of, um, of the Earthship, living off grid, it forces real limits. You know, in a normal home, you've just got a never ending supply of power and water, and the only real limit is what you can pay for, and you can even get credit, so you can kind of even pay for stuff you can't afford. So by relying really on your own resources, that forces you to limit your consumption somewhat. And it also empowers you to sort of uh, change the game now. So if you're not happy with you know, coal-fired power or nuclear power, which is what's been discussed more recently in Australia, you can just go, stuff that, I'm getting some batteries and some panels and some water tanks, and I'm, uh, I'm gonna do it my way. Mike Reynolds and his crew go all around the world teaching people how to do this. Um, so this is a project out of Africa, making um, plastic bottle bricks there, um, using cans and cement. You can see tyres on the bottom there, three courses of tyres and then these ferro-cement bolts, which is a very efficient use of steel and cement just to make a thin shell that can catch water in tanks. You can see in the middle there a black rainwater tank. Okay. All right, so this is my project. It's a bed and breakfast. People can come and stay in it. Um, as I said, first council approved Earthship in Australia. There's a Facebook site. That's the basic floor plan. So there's just that, that main room there with the greenhouse in front, bathroom at the end. Uh, so it's just a little one. That's Mike Reynolds, the, the uh, architect from America who who came and actually kicked off the project back in 2009, the whole bunch of um, uni students who came up and helped out. And since that day, I've just been making steady progress on it. It's actually taken about six years, but when you add up the time, it's only been more like six months um, of working weekends and summer holidays. And as I said before, it's all very sort of low tech. All you need is, is kind of you know a sledgehammer and a shovel and you're off and running. And of course the tyres come for free. The people at the tyre tire stores are always happy to see me because it saves them money. It costs them a couple of bucks to get rid of a tyre. They're the earth tubes on my project. Um, this is um, some reinforcing on the top of the tyre wall to make sure it's really strong and it doesn't fall over when it's backfilled with all that earth all around it. This is a ferro cement, um, or the sort of the bones of a ferro cement um, vault roof, um, which you can see actually sort of going on top of the tire wall there. There it is again. Formwork, propping it while we're putting the uh, cement render on it. That's the second layer of cement render. Electrical, more formwork. This is a bucket line passing buckets of cement into the formwork. That's the greenhouse framing. That was uh, last Easter. Putting, putting, um, putting cement render on the, um, on the uh, ferro cement um, rebar. This is actually hempcrete for insulation. It's a close up of the hempcrete. Bottle bricks, planning it out for a bottle wall. Uh, joinery in the greenhouse. This is filling up the um, on the right. Is testing for leaks in the um, the grey water planter and doing a mud floor in the in the greenhouse. That's it there. That was on the shortest day this year. Sun designed to come all the way in to the living spaces, warming them up nicely. Beautiful little mural made out of mud. Uh, that's uh, the northern elevation of the of Earthship Iron Bank. These are some of the wonderful people. Literally hundreds of people have come. A lot of them actually paid me to come and help me build my Earthship and learn how to do it. Um, and uh, they, these are kind of taking off all over the world. Pardon the pun. And uh, that's, a, that's a concept for an Earthship city, Earthship suburb. And um, to end on a quote by Michael Reynolds, this concept of living could change the nature of the human mind itself. It could provide a basis and a direction for conscious evolution on Earth. And what he's, what he's getting at here is if you've got a lounge room that looks like that, where you can just reach up and grab a banana, it's been grown in your wastewater, you don't have to worry about electricity bills and water bills, then you're, you're probably going to be a much happier person. So um, 
I'll leave it at that. Thank you.